recent report have shown that only 4% of world's ocean remain undamaged by human activity. We have been warned so many times that if we do, if we do nothing to improve this situation, little to no sustainable ocean resources will remain. Now, Steve Danik here will show you some data. Thank you, Vincent. I understand not everybody here is a biologist like myself, but this is pretty easy, so we'll get you through it. Um, as you can clearly see by the table here, uh, fish populations are in decline in the Gulf of Mexico. The pay particularly close attention to the red drum figures. The biomass index is at risk, and uh, it's okay. Okay, Dan, stop. But this, uh, this is get up and take a break. <laughs> Okay, let's welcome our team manager, Ashley, to show you some more interesting stuff. Thank you, Vincent. Thank you. Now, as you can all plainly see, we've normalized the data from the previous slide, and using a combination of a Monte Carlo statistical method along with linear interpolation, we've managed to create the graphs that you can see behind me. Now, the derivations, the statistical derivations for these graphs was very complex. Nevertheless, I will take you through a short demonstration of exactly... No, no, we're not going to do that. Instead of showing them graphs, let's just show them the fish. This is not a movie. This is actual data that we can read from scientific models. When we complete this project, we will re be able to read new data in continuously and actually reflect predictions, accurate predictions, using scientific data of the fish population in the ocean. Remember those incomprehensible spreadsheets and graphs that we've all dealt with? Well, this is the future of data visualization. Backed by the best available science, being able to see information in this new way is incredibly powerful. We are working for the UBC Fisheries Center to create this visual that reads the data from their model. And here we are modeling a small section of the Gulf of Mexico and eight species of marine life. Being able to use this visualization will have so many applications in the future. They're, this is just the beginning to show just fish. We we'll hope to show more in the future. We can show different things. But the application, we should go into more detail what we're planning to use this app, what this application is going to be used for. Some folks at the UBC Fisheries Center came to us a few months ago and they had a problem. How could they use the extensive data that they've gathered on fish populations for the last 50 years to forecast, to look into the future of impacts on fishing? We have helped them with that. By using the Blender open source game engine, we are going to read, we are reading, going to be able to read actual scientific data show it in real time. As we read it, you will see the populations increase and decrease over time. The fisheries center needed a model that was usable by people who are not scientists, people who are not statisticians. They needed a model that people in government, commercial fisheries, coastal communities, and environmental organizations could actually access, understand, and use. So our part of this project was to help develop this tool that uh, we hope will help people make good decisions, create good policies, and ensure that there's a, st a sustainable future for our ocean resources. And uh, maybe make us feel a little better about the sushi that we had this evening. <laughs> so we're two months in. We have six weeks to go. We're gonna make it so that you can see those fish grow and die and change and see what's happening within the environment based on decisions you've made. See the effects 
in what the predictions of the populations will be in 50 years, and you can see that the effects of your decisions in just a few minutes. But how did we get here? Well, as we participate in this amazing program and create our projects, we're also building teams. And our process has been working together to solve problems. How do you get a game engine to respond to real-time scientific data? How do you model and animate 3D fish so that they look like they're really swimming? We'd like to share with you uh, a few of the behind-the-scenes moments uh, that we've had over the past couple of months.